This week's podcast is brought to you by Nike, home of the world's first 100% recycled hammock made from 37 plastic post-consumer water bottles and weighing less than one kilo. Nike products will not only make you feel good, see what I did there? (laughs) But they make the environment feel good too. Mm, Love it. Nike, relax wherever you go. Seriously. What are you waiting for? We love the Nike products so much. We have so many of the Nike products and they are all awesome. Look, if you want to get your hands on some Nike products, jump on over to our website and take advantage of the awesome 15% feel good Mm -hmm. discount code that our good friends at Nike have provided for our awesome feel good family audience. Welcome to Season 6, Episode 17 of the Family Travel Australia Podcast. We are Paul, Katie and Jasper from the Feel Good Family. Join us as we explore this great country, Australia, its people, places and cultures. Yes, welcome to the Family Travel Podcast where we share the latest in RV industry news, road trip travel, caravanning and camping, product reviews, where to go, what to do and so much more. Thanks for joining us for another week. This week we finish our time in Charleville with an awesome time at the Cosmos Centre. We see our first weather balloon release, learn about the Vortex gun, watch a class at the School of the Air, get a selfie at the big chair, camp off grid at the Charleville Bush Camp And we start our journey west along the Natural Sciences Mm -hmm. Loop. Seriously, who would have thought that there is so much to do in Charleville? It is an epicentre of activity. And the last time that we were here, it was COVID restrictions Mm -hmm. and we went out there pretty excited and couldn't do anything. We actually couldn't even see the bilbies. That's right. The bilbies were breeding, taking uh, Mm. full advantage of uh, quite a (laughs) visitation during COVID. They They were were. certainly getting stuck into it, probably literally. But anyway, we could not even get to the Cosmos Centre, which was so disappointing. I know that was top on your list, Paul, for Mm. our visit to Charleville. So this time we were a lot more planned. We uh, had booked well in advance of our visit, and that would be a hot tip for us uh, for any time of year when you are coming out to Charleville, because there are a number of experiences that would be the most popular ones to do. So definitely Mm. jump on and book those. This time around, we stayed back at the Charleville Bush Camp. I really love it here. It is fantastic. Mm. And... Now that we've got the capabilities of harnessing the power of the sun better and just, you know, the rig, both rigs actually combined Mm -hmm. are just better set up for off-grid camping. We chose to not camp in their powered or Mm -hmm. full hookup sites and to put ourselves over on the top of this little mound. (laughs) We were the only ones there. It absolutely poured with rain. They'd had 35 mil on the Tuesday before Mm -hmm. we got there. They had... I think, was it 40 oh, so on much Friday? Money. And so it was Lake Charleville around us. And we were sort of sitting up there like Noah's Ark. We were. We were on our little island. <laughs> Just us and a couple of old rusting cars that they had placed around, which actually provided a really beautiful outlook for where we were camping. It's interesting because I think since our last visit, they've changed their name. So they're now referred to as the Charleville Bush Caravan Park. And I find that that deters a lot of people. I don't know why they put caravan Mm. park in there. I mean, they've got four hookups. You can certainly go and park up and feel like you're at a caravan park. But our recommendation Mm. would be if you can go off grid, definitely get yourself over onto the unpowered area because it's so much nicer. I agree. Uh, Now, no pets allowed. Mm. And no smokers, no smoking on site. Yeah, yeah. And look, those rules are made very clear Mm -hmm. the moment that you drive in. If you have a smoking dog, you are definitely not welcome. (laughs) Ah, that joke just never gets old, (laughs) Dal. Thanks. (laughs) But of course, they've got all of the usual facilities and amenities that you would expect from somewhere like this. Mm -hmm. And just masses of that awesome orangey red landscape to enjoy. If you've got kids, they're going to love this spot. Jasper and Paul set out every day on their spy missions and there's all of this quirky, if I say junk, it kind of makes it sound really bad. Agricultural, farm, old trucks, signage, Mm. tools, you name it. Stuff. 
Yeah. They built a fort, their secret base den <laughs> thing for their spy game. Like hours of entertainment for the kids so and plenty of space to run around as well. All right. So from here, really two, three minutes drive yeah. from the centre of Charleville. It's such a great location to really explore and be right in the action. Mm -hmm. We headed over to the Cosmos Centre. Absolutely fantastic. There's about six different offers that you can experience mm -hmm. here. We got to do a number of them. Now, the weather was so hit and miss, mm. we cannot believe that we fluked the night. They actually they came in and made an announcement when we arrived and yeah. said, look, unfortunately, the, the cloud good. is coming in and out and... And everyone just was like, oh, just so bummed. And then they offer another experience. Don't worry, though. We've got the planetarium. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Which was absolutely fantastic. However, we did get to go on a up-close-and-personal yeah. stargazing tour with the largest, I think it's 30-inch commercial telescope in Queensland. The clouds parted <laughs> Perfectly clear for the hour and a half that this experience took, mm -hmm. and we were totally gobsmacked. Eight people that's why it's you know a small group up close and personal. Mm. A personal guide, Ashley, who is one of the most knowledgeable, <laughs> I guess, astrologists that you would ever meet for a young guy. Oh, no, and doesn't he have a great story too? And so. Mm. Just so into, I mean, I think you'd have to be into space to sort of do this kind mm. of job, but he was so into what he did that that just made the experience so much better for everybody. Look, Charleville's a fairly small uh, community and they have a restaurant at a hotel motel in town that is, you know, sort of kind of on the higher end of things really, opposed to the pubs or cafes. And he was working there in hospitality and was just a gun, like, you know, it just got the customer mm. experience and, and the value of personalising that. And the Cosmos Centre guy was out there having dinner and just went, we've got to get this guy. Mm -hmm. So they nabbed him. Yeah, and he was supposed to go into customer service, obviously, over at the Cosmos yeah. Centre, but uh, managed to train up under the wing of an astrophysicist, yeah. which is pretty damn cool, and now runs – all of these tours there at the Cosmos Centre and he's so full of knowledge. I loved that he was open to questions the mm -hmm. entire tour from the people that were on the tour and there were some really good questions and he was able to just chat with us and, and normalise it because space can be quite <clears throat> excuse me, space can be quite overwhelming when you really yeah. start to get into the nitty gritty of it and trying to get your head around where how many million light years from that and that takes what and I'm looking at something that doesn't even exist anymore. It can really mess with your head. The space in space is epic. Yes, yes. But Ash's knowledge and just his... As you say, his customer service skills really mm. was relatable for everybody, including Jasper. I love that. He... Got Jasper engaged the whole way mm -hmm. through. They shifted the ladder because you actually have to walk up a, it's I guess a, a rolling set of staircases, very wide, very large to get to the eyepiece, which is up towards the very top of this 30-inch telescope. Uh, they just made the experience for him as enjoyable for any of us. In fact, mm. Jasper's enthusiasm mm. was what made the whole experience for most of the people there because every time he looked into the eyepiece, he went, oh, that's awesome. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Like, and, and there was this raw emotion coming out of a five-year-old that really moved everyone. Everyone was like, oh, wow, I can't wait to see this. I mean, you're looking yeah. at the rings of Saturn. Oh, that was incredible. Uh, I don't know. I, I'd never could have imagined that you would be able to see them through a telescope. Yeah. I was unaware of that. Yeah, and like little um, groups of stars that they would find and then say to us, you know, that is millions. Ten million stars in that cluster. Yeah, and it like you're looking at it through this eyepiece and you're just thinking, what on earth <laughs> are we worried, worried about? about? Yeah. Look, I think... The reality is is that you're in your day-to-day -day and you're in your own head and you're in your own space and you're on your own planet in a way, you know, planet Paul, and 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 that's where you, all of this concentration is. And then mm. as the further they pull away from Earth, the smaller, you know, you think, all oh, a man's problems on the 
Do you know what? The signs Thinking of about it now, I actually think that's probably why Ashley was the way that he was. Because every day mm. he's looking up there, taking that incredible mass of universe that we don't even know about yet mm. into perspective. Maybe that is the secret to life. Look up to the stars there more. You go. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I mean, it can make you feel rather insignificant and you could take it two ways. You could think, oh, well, who cares? Or you can say, wow, we're yeah. part of something pretty amazing yeah. here. Give yourself a bit of a slap around and yeah. get some perspective. Yeah, and just stop sweating the small stuff and yeah. get on with it. 100%. Look, mm. the Cosmos Centre was amazing. An absolute highlight. As you said, Paul, they offer so many different tours that you mm. can do. Hot tips from us. Obviously, book in advance, but check the weather. Make sure you are across that before you make a booking, right? Because you want to get the best possible chance of getting into one of those night tours and Mm -hmm. it going ahead. Look, if it doesn't go ahead, they do have the planetarium, which they explained to us actually is really fantastic because it can give so much more detail. They basically can project up onto the domed roof of the planetarium, the universe, and And talk about it that way. Beyond your peripheral, so... Mm. It's incredibly immersive. Yeah, it is. They run a couple of uh, short films in the planetarium as well. Mm -hmm. They also run a daily sun viewing tour, which we participated in as well, on a sun scope. scope. Yeah. And that was fantastic. And again, really awesome to do with Jasper and for him to be able to look through and see the solar flares coming off the sun and get all of that just cool information. He has always been into space and Mm -hmm. he's always been into like rockets and Elon Musk and, you know, like he just loves that. But since we've been to the Cosmos Centre, his passion for learning. I know, he's getting around everywhere, like even just in the hallway here in the van going, it's one small step for Jasper. Yeah. You know. (laughs) He dead said he's going to go up in a rocket one day, I'm sure. He's told us, I'm launching a rocket, I'm launching. He's told yeah. us that since we were out at Woomera. Remember yes. that? When we did the yeah, trek South from Australia. Adelaide to Darwin, we went to Woomera and he got back in the car and he, he's like, mark my words, I'm going to, and we're like, mm. you're three. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's certainly going to, at the moment, be an ambition of him, so yeah. I wouldn't put it past him. Look, definitely put the Cosmos Centre on your list to do when you are in Charleville. Okay, let's move on. A couple of weather events here. The first one was the weather balloon release, a first for the feel goods. Yeah, and a really popular thing for visitors to Charleville to do because I guess, well, in all of our travels around Australia, we have never seen this take place before, so we were like, no. oh, we better go check this out. Look, there's 38 of these weather balloons. They're probably a metre in diameter. It's a large blue latex balloon uh, that are released every single day. 1,300 of these balloons are released around the world. Currently, they're looking at other ways, materials that may be a little friendlier to the environment, mm. break down sooner, Yes, I guess. Um, it's measuring wind direction, speed, temperature, and getting a grasp of all of this information sent back down to the meteorologist so they can get the weather right for us. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah, and it's an automated release mm-hmm. down there near the airport at the weather station. It's a, an activity that waits for no man. <laughs> no, no, don't be late. No, you will miss it. And literally, you kind of crick your neck for about 45 seconds and it's all over, Red Rover. Yeah, but it's pretty cool. Pretty cool thing to go mm. and do and that certainly attracts a lot of people every day down there at the weather balloon release. It was good. It, it led into some really good education for mm. Jasper around, uh, you know, weather vanes and yes. rain gauges and we did some activities then in line with his school curriculum. Yeah, really awesome. Very in cool. fact, it was great timing for us to receive all of that unseasonal rain in Charleville because we made a rain gauge <laughs> and put it out on the bull bar on the 79 and woke up the next morning after a full day and night of rain and he was just so happy. Such a simple activity to do. So we'll take our little rain gauge with us now and measure the weather around the country as we travel. And our little meteorologist. (laughs) Keeping on with the weather, we checked out uh, another really intriguing location in town. It's actually next to the the large Charleville chair, which is basically like a 
giant's, you know, park bench. That's yeah, the I size feel like of it. Goldilocks you getting can, up there. There's even a ladder to climb up on it. We put the drone up and got a great uh, selfie yeah. on there. It was very cool. And next to that is the Vortex gun. Now, AKA the Rainmaker. Mm, isn't that? I love it. The yeah. Rainmaker. I think from memory, it might have been 1902. There's a really famous meteorology. His name was Clement Raggy, an Irish guy. And he had. Got together with another guy called, uh, I think it was, it was called the Steiger yep. Vortex Gun, who had created this five metre large funnel that they packed with different chemicals and, you know, gunpowder. <laughs> and then it would. <laughs> Sounds really safe. <laughs> yeah, it's incredibly safe. Then they, they'd ignite it and it would shoot up into the air and it would break up the cloud or create precipitation. Pers- Precipitation. That's the one, the perfect <laughs> conditions for rain. It was a really bad, bad, bad drought mm-hmm. out here in outback Queensland at the time. In mm-hmm. fact, reading about the drought is quite shocking, uh, the conditions that they had at the time, hence mm. why Raggy thought, let's do something about this. Yeah, there was a huge amount of uh, community support and mm. fundraising to pay for these. There, uh, uh, from the pictures, it looks like there's half a dozen of these things. So these massive, they, they refer to them as the Charleville Bugles. Loaded them up, shrapnel went everywhere, people were ducking for cover. <laughs> that was you, about you all that imagine. happened. Yeah, and um, it was regarded as, as a failure. About three weeks later, the rains came, and so in some people's minds, they were like, well, it was all bit a bit late. It, it did show up. Mm, well, who really would know how long those chemicals and things take to uh, get those clouds into action? But yeah. it's pretty cool to go and read that story and a great bit of history for Charleville. He, um, he was quite a character, though, wasn't he, going on he to was. be the first man to name cyclones? Yes. So he actually would name cyclones – after the politicians that were in power at the time mm. because he believed that politicians wreaked as much havoc on the community as cyclones did. So that was his own little bit of humour. Mm. I'm sure there's a few nodding heads out there <laughs> who can uh, kind of relate to that as well. well. He lost some friends in high places over this. but I'm gained. sure he made some friends in the community. Oh, though. they loved him. Mm. He was such a, a larrikin. Yeah. They they actually suggest that the word inclement regarding the weather is related to his name. I can't find anything to actually validate that, but that is how the story yeah, goes. Look, if you let us, if you know the answer to that, <laughs> let us know. All right, moving on. School of the Air. Oh, fantastic! And another really excellent educational, entertaining tour to do mm-hmm. in Charleville for a five dollar donation per adult, which actually Amazing. goes back to the children of Distance Education Charleville at the end of the year. So well worth it. I loved how much information we got. Like we got the history of the School of the Air. We got shown the devices that the kids first started learning on the mm. uh, HF radios and how that has progressed over the years as technology has advanced. The highlight was getting to sit in on a live lesson. It was a year nine class. We got to sit in with the teacher History, in his wasn't it? yes, in his on air studio, watch him at the massive interactive screen, watch the responses from the kids who could be anywhere in Queensland or around Australia for that matter. Or the world actually. There I th- I think all up there were another seven countries internationally that actually log in to School of the Air in Charleville. Yeah, look, it was brilliant. We came out of that live classroom lesson and Jasper was just like, that was amazing. It's so interactive. I mean, this must be whatever that size is, 75, 80-inch touch screen. Mm. So he's got cameras on him. He can see on the right-hand side all of the students and he is saying to them, right here, he's circling things, underlining things now, you know, and talking about World War Two, and this is where they came around. Mm-hmm. Give me your, your review here. What do you think was going to happen next? And then the kids would write, they'd type their answers in mm-hmm. and then he would tick their boxes and then once he'd got everyone's answers in, then he'd move on with the lesson and swipe pages and then get them to take screen captures and he was so animated. I guess you've got to be on, mm. but I was like, this is like Patch Adams, you know, 
in today, you know, yeah. in the future, you know, it's very cool. It was awesome. And learning about the system and how the School of Distance Education, as it's now referred to, supports the families who are part of this system. Mm. It was so good getting to go and um, look into a grade one class and mm-hmm. wave the at kids. the little kids on the screen was another highlight for Jasper. And just as a travelling family who started homeschooling this year and, you know, we're out of that normal box of the education system as thousands around the country are, getting to experience a different normal for all of us was so fantastic. I mm. I love this tour. I think as you're making your list of things to do in Charleville, and there are plenty of them, this would be one to put on the top of your list, whether you're a travelling family, whether you're a grandparent or or not, whether you're, you know, just a solo traveller, to go and see what these amazing people are doing. Yeah. And add a little bit of value to these kids at the end of the year. You know, they take all of those donation monies and they can print up T-shirts for the year with their names on it and, you know, their their class year or whatever. Mm -hmm. They get to do something with that donation money, which I love as well. So you've got a little bit of a positive impact in these kids' lives. An incredible amount of support for the mums. There's a lot of, you know, these outback areas Mm. that, that you're on million acre property, so yeah. you, you don't have a neighbour for, you know, four hours or something. Yeah. And so there's loads of support for the family as well, mm. in particular the mums, because they seem to be the ones that are the primary carer teacher at home on the ground on these properties. Yeah. And then a couple of times a year, they bring them all in together. They invite them all in. They camp out in their swags. Yep. And then they interact. The mums get extra training, extra help can ask for assistance in certain areas, whether that's first aid training or anything, the Mm -hmm. way they're teaching, you know, the the curriculum, go through things. And this happens, I think they do a couple of weeks a year where they're just all together as well. And the kids also then get all that social interaction. So brilliant, a great community built out of, you know, I think it says one voice um, to bring everyone together. Mm. It is it's not actually like that. It's, it's better than that, obviously, but it's it's very cool. Yeah, really, really fantastic. And the the staff were so passionate about what they do, and I think it's easy to uh, sort of discount the importance that teachers play in the roles of our children's lives and also our lives as well. So it was so good to to have that experience. Loved it. Loved it absolutely. Okay, highlight of Charleville for you. Oh, including look, last week's app. Yeah, of course. I know there's so there's so much, you know, mm. the bilbies and there's so much history. The, the secret base was fantastic as well. Gosh, how do you really decide? I think for me, I really loved that school of distance education mm-hmm. tour because it was so different. It's not something that you would probably normally do in your travels. It was less touristy perhaps, yeah. as, an, as an attraction or an experience. And I just really – I love being able to do that with, with my family and Jasper and knowing that it actually meant something to us because we're road schooling. Fantastic. For me, it was – it's time to kick the tyres and light some fires. <laughs> it was Luke at the World War II mm-hmm. Air Base, a secret base, the tag-along tour, and then the interactive in the centre as well. Mm-hmm. I was blown away because I'd never heard this story. I mean, mm. they're hiding three and a half thousand Americans out the middle of, you know, the outback of Queensland. Yeah. Massive dance hall. You know, I mean, that it was really just a... Oh, it would have been a happening place to be. Giddy up. Look yep. out. <laughs> all these yanks in town. Yeah. Stealing all the Australian women <laughs> yeah, they were. exactly. Exactly. I just love that story. It's yeah. really amazing. Really great. And, of course, the Cosmos Centre. I mean, you can't go past that. It, it's good reason why it's the most popular attraction and thing to do in Charleville. Uh, just who doesn't love looking at the stars? Love it. Okay. Bilby's is actually the number one experience there. And yeah, it was right. great. But I think, you know, you can come a little bit desensitised to these things when that was our background was wildlife yes. for many, many years, yeah. both of us working at Australia Zoo and – was a gr- that was a great tour, though, it, I have it, to it say. is great. And was it Lisa? Yes. Uh, yeah. Wow, I talk about an enthusiastic ball of energy, wasn't she? A hundred percent. So it, that's a great tour as well. Yep. But, um, yeah, no, I'll stick with World War Two. Mm. All right, let's move on. We're leaving Charleville finally. Right. We're heading out to Quilpie. Mm-hmm. Now, 
collectively, this was, I think, around about 210 kilometres. Yeah, sounds about right. 210. Yeah, I think that's right. Mm. So, But 88 kilometres down the, the road is a place that is famous because it's called Kaladi. Yep. It is the Australia's smallest town on the longest road in Australia. Yes. Yes, that's it. It that, has a population of three. That's right. And we met two of the locals. And we walked in and doubled yes. the community. Yeah, and it's famous for the Fox Trap, which is mm. the local pub, it's the motel, it's the post office, basically anything you want it to be, really, when there's only three people in town. Bunnings, it's everything. It's so worth stopping and having a chat with Laurel and Roxanne and having a meal. We had great toasted sandwiches. Yes, she said to me, this isn't that fake craft stuff, this is real cheese. And we don't put one slice on, we put three. I love it. And uh, have a yarn to them. Ask Laurel how the fox trap got its name. It's a really quirky and interesting story. And um, grab a pen and write a note on the ceiling like we did. Yes, permission to graffiti the property from the publican. They're just really lovely ladies. And I think giving such an awesome, interactive, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, personalised experience for travellers, weary travellers, because it's the only stop in between these locations. Um, There is an old train siding that you can visit. We couldn't get there because it it was so wet that they said, if you drive down there, we're not going to come You ain't coming back. Yeah. (laughs) You'll be there for two weeks. Do you know what's interesting is Laurel said to me, we haven't seen green grass out here for over 12 years. Wow. Yep, and it's a carpet of green. There is green everywhere. It was so wet. How amazing is that? 12, I mean, save on your water bill, I suppose. You don't have to worry about tending to your lawn. But 12 years without seeing grass. So I've got to tell the fox trap story if that's okay. Oh, you're going to give it away. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, some people listening uh, aren't going to be able to get to this location. But back in its day, it was a major watering hole for shearers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Australia was... Well, its economy was built off the back of a sheep. Uh, and, and this was one of those locations where the shearers would get their pay after a couple of weeks of shearing thousands of sheep. They'd come, they'd put their pay packet on the bar mm-hmm. and they'd literally drink their way through a couple of days of all their pay and then they'd go back and repeat. <laughs> Sounds like a nice, healthy lifestyle. Amazing, yeah. And one day, one of these wives of the shearers rang and said, is my husband there? I want to speak to the, the owner. Mm-hmm. And this guy's name was like Alan Fox, mm. something like that. I'm not sure of his first name. And his nickname was Foxy. She mm. said, where's Foxy? So get him on the line. She's like, what are you doing? Mm. You know, send him home. You shouldn't keep feeding him beers. He's meant to be at home looking after me and the kids. Mm-hmm. And so she then referred to it in the circle. She said, do you know what this place should be? It's a fox trap. It's Foxy's trap, she mm-hmm. said. And then it became known as the fox trap because that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Go and get yourself trapped at the fox trap. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Drink away your wage. (laughs) Unbelievable. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Very worthy of a stop. One of those quirky little places that Mm. you'll only find in the outback. Exactly. Uh, We are now heading to Mm Quilpy, and we actually went straight into the Vic, the Visitor Information Centre. We were there, I think, on a Sunday. It was Father's Day. Yes, ha- it was. Happy Father's Day for all the fathers out there for a few weeks back. Um, but we made it into the Visitor Information Centre. We were able to stretch our hose, mm. <laughs> literally just made it to our fill point yeah. on our tanks, filled up our tanks, then headed down to the lake, which is about five or six kilometres out of the centre of Quilby, mm-hmm. to an amazing, amazing property. It's a 2,000-acre private property known as a hobby farm. They're running sheep mostly there. Mm -hmm. And we got there and, again, it had rained so much. Mm -hmm. The lake had flooded out. And so our dream of camping off-grid down by the lake, unfortunately, wasn't available because, Mm. again, if you got down there, you wouldn't get out. You couldn't even get down there. That was the point. So the lake uh, had broken its banks and it just was uh, a nice muddy mess down there by the shores, but very thankfully they have an awesome uh, site. 
that they have put in with access to power and water, if you mm-hmm. please, that does still overlook the lake. So that was a great alternative and it's now one of our favourite campgrounds. I think there would have to be 35 to 40 actual mm-hmm. powered full hookup sites available mm. and massive. They're all drive through. Mm. We got the pole position. Yes. And we will tell you more about the lake Ooh, next week. There's so much to tell. <laughs> it is fantastic. <laughs> One thing that was very cool is we rocked up and the people running it, it was Sandy and I can't remember her name. The Belinda. Belinda. Sandy and Belinda. Hi, guys. Fellow travellers from WA. And they're like, oh, the feel goods, you know. And so that was, that was really cool. And he said, where's Jasper? Come on, mate. We're about to feed our little stud goats. This is actually their last full bottle feed and we're weaning them off after this bottle. So he was just like, wow, this is cool. And as we're walking along, he's like, oh, that's our pet kangaroo for the property. And there's just, yeah, I mean, it's random stuff that happens when you're out back. And so what a great introduction and great to meet, you know, this lovely couple that had been following our journey since we'd started. So that was very cool. Well, they'll be back on the road now. They've been uh, caretaking there at the lake Mm -hmm. for quite a while, but they were, I think, only two weeks off hitting the road again when we were there. So safe travels, guys, if you're listening. Yes. All right. Now, before we wrap up, our takeaway this week Mm. was – was really born out of that cosmos experience and this idea that life is just uncertain, yep. you know. And so, and to your point, Katie, I think we all need to, you know, get out of our heads and look up, mm. you know, look up at the stars. If you can find a, a space or get out of the city that you're in or get out to a national park, take your family with you, Yeah. look up. Yeah, 100%. Don't, as you said, Paul, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, it Mm. really is so unimportant in the scheme of this one life that we get. So just make the most of it and, yeah. Hug each other. Yeah. Hug it out. And anyone can tell me how to explain to a six-year-old how to get in his head the concept of the speed of light and how we can be looking at the stars or actually looking into the past because those stars may not even exist anymore. There's a conversation I tried to have with him the other night off the back of our Cosmos Centre experience. And he just, I kind of think I know what you mean, but I'm just not sure what you mean. Can you explain it to me again? So if anybody's got any tips on that, he's really keen to understand it. So am I. <laughs> it is incredible. Yeah. It is truly incredible. That's right. You know, looking at the past, mm. those stars may not even exist. Yep. We're, we're looking at them. All right. Leave you with that thought. Next week, Australia's largest dinosaur. Yeah, the fossilized dinosaur bones out there at Eramanga. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, what what an incredible surprise to find a building of this nature, the Natural History Museum, out in Eramanga. That is like literally hundreds of kilometres from anywhere. Really incredible. Yeah, no, it is a six and a half million dollar. <laughs> Museum. World class museum. Yeah. That is in a small town that is the furthest town from the sea in Australia. Mm. That's how far out it is. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be talking about that and of course Quilpy. What a wonderful friendly town. And we'll give you the more details there around the lake, the awesome. fabulous campground that we stayed at. Fantastic. All right, for now we'll say dream big, look after yourself. Look after your family. And happy trails. Ah, good stuff. Holy dooly. So much more good stuff to come next week. Yeah, look, uh, we will be having uh, a little bit of a curveball next week as well with our travel plans. Oh, yeah. So we'll tell you about that. Yeah, that unseasonal rain, she just didn't stop. No, it kept coming and flooding. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we're going to go and wake up our child who is... Yes. Absolutely out cold this morning. And get a wriggle on. Yeah, he ran around crazy yesterday, didn't he? All right, take care of yourself. We'll see you next week. Bye, Bye, guys.
Thank you.